That was like eight weeks ago. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, yeah, so he's like, yeah,
and tried to figure out a way to work it out. So what we're going to try and talk to you today is how a brand or a business can work together with a blogger or a brand ambassador to help you reach target markets that you wouldn't get to by yourself. So it's a relationship that you can build as a business or as a small business or as a person. Monique blogs for Claremont Quarter um, as well as <laughs> everywhere else. Yeah, <laughs> she blogs everywhere. And she's there, another brand ambassador. Yeah. And, yeah, and all other things, but we'll get to that in the second part. The first thing um, we'd like to talk about, let's see if that works. Will it work? Will it work? Will it work? Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the trends that um, in business, um, the trends that I'm starting to work with. I've been marketing manager now for 20 years. Now, in those 20 years, as you can appreciate, um, things have changed. Uh, I used to work a 40 hour week with no social media. So, what I did in that 40 hours, I don't know. 
I can't tell you, I have no memory of. Somehow it involved press ads and maybe some posters. I don't know how I told anyone what happened, or daily, or hourly, or live. I don't know um, how that ever works. So now 85% of my time is spent social media. So I've got five shopping centres that I do marketing for as well as a few small businesses. So I've got a gamut of all different demographics I'm trying to reach on different levels. So Times Square is probably a good one uh, to give you because we use all sorts of social media avenues. The newest one at the moment is Snapchat for business. People will go to Snapchat, what, that's just where you send rude pictures to each other in the middle of the night. Um, that's what people think of Snapchat. It's changing. It's the biggest social media um, platform now and it will be in the next year. So it's something for business. Mon is on there. She, at the end, she'll give you her Snapchat. I follow her daily. I just need to see what she's doing because it's much more exciting than my life. And I think that's um, the key. Right? And that's the key, is to keep the content interesting. So for a shopping centre, um, how do you keep it interesting? Well, especially on Snapchat. Um, you know, you're not a stylist, you're not a blogger, you know, you, you're in an office. And, but what you need to do is give people behind the scenes information. So people want to see what's going on. Subway, have a Snapchat. Subway, like, you know, what, why would you follow Subway? But it's that way of getting your brand to people and giving them um, a notion that you're not just a corporation, that there is somebody there. So the idea behind all of social media is to make, um, A, a community. So whatever your brand is, you need to make sure that it's created in a community where people feel like they can share and, you know, it, it's not just you against them, you're all part of the same team. So Snapchat for Times Square involves me going to the centre, going in and out of the stores, taking pictures, taking video of retailers, going to events like this one. I've just Snapchatted pictures and it only lasts for 24 hours if you do a My Story on Snapchat. Now that's where the brand building comes. It's a whole day in the life of your brand, um, be it Mon as her brand of her or Times Square as the brand of me. So it's what you do during the day. You know, it just gives people snaps of your brand. Now that's going to get bigger and bigger. Sorry, I was just mm. going to add to um, the thing that we're finding a lot with Snapchat now, um, especially because being you know a local Perth blogger or an Australian blogger, I aspire to be you know someone like Kiara Ferrani. She's amazing, and following someone like Kiara Ferrani, you'll notice like I followed her for years and years and years, and she started out like us, but now. She's like editorial, she has her own shoe company, like she's huge. So all of her other social media is so curated and so is ours. You know, our Instagram is not instant. Our Facebook is not instant. Snapchat is that instant kind of behind the scenes, doing something dorky, you know, showing people what it's really like behind on the scenes of a photo shoot, you know, trying to squeeze into jeans in the back of a car and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> that was a doubt. Um, but all that sort of stuff is what uh, Snapchat is kind of there for, you can see that real personality behind the person um, who's giving you these beautiful curated images and, um, you know, wonderful stories. So yeah, it's a bit more personal um, and yeah, if you follow lots of these big people, you'll start to see that everyone's really just a giant dork and stresses out as much as you do. Yeah. Yeah. It's even so, like a Kylie Jenner, I mean, you know, she's the most followed person on Snapchat and most of you have ever followed her, which I did. Really. Um, I'm 41, I still follow up. Um, I don't even. <laughs> I'm just tragic. Um, but she does stuff, you know, that you see, and you know, even me, I love to have a sneak peek and see what she's just, you know, doing crap that you think, what's she doing? But you think, you know, she's normal, otherwise, you see all those beautiful yeah. images where you go, you know, no one's ever like that. So it's nice to see. And she actually got to um, the younger generation who were bullied on Snapchat by just late night talking to them, telling them she'd been bullied, it was all the same, she was the same as everyone else. So like it made people feel like, you know, they weren't alone. Um, right, the next one, um, so Snapchat is gonna get bigger and bigger, so Google it. Um, there's articles all over the place on the future of social media and Snapchat. So if you wanna know more about it, um, there's a link up there. Um, that's um, just telling you McDonald's are on there, Audi are on there, just companies you never thought would be on there are on there. There's also people paying to have, um, their live streams on there all the time. Um, it's no links, you can't link, it doesn't drive traffic to your sites, but it does brand awareness. So that's all Snapchat is for, brand awareness. Kind of like when they had the Oktoberfest yeah. feed and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and they had um, any big events like ESPN have, they do it live and they get everyone's Snapchats and it all goes through to one big um, avenue and it all comes through. So that's where brands are going. So people tell you it's just about sending rude pictures to each other at night, it might be, 
but the My Story section is a Snapchat of your whole day and brands are taking advantage of that. Uh, Regrand app, I think nearly everyone would have a repost app on Instagram somewhere along the line, I think. Yes, no, is it just me? Yes, okay, could be <laughs> just don't. me. You don't? No. Again, it's just me. Um, repost for business. Um, I've got a lot of retailers in my shopping centre and all of them have Instagram accounts. So what we do is we regram or we repost or there's about 5,000 apps out there. Regram app, which I find is different, is you can actually repost from Instagram. All the other ones you have to actually go out into a, a separate app and then it loads your Instagram feed and you have to do it from there, which for me is time consuming because I've got so many different Instagram accounts. So if you're in the Instagram account and you see something fun come up, you can share it straight away. It's talking about live sharing or fast sharing. If you share it the next day, it's too late. There's no point because everyone's already done it. So if you're gonna share something, if it's live from Perth um, Fashion Festival or it's New York Fashion Week, do it then and there. Don't wait until the next day, it's too late. No one cares. So that's what reposting and regrounding is good for. As you see it, as it comes up, you do it straight away. If it interests your target market, People that follow you on Instagram, if you think something you see on your is going to you know, be good for them, well then regram it, repost it and um, give them a call out but also show what you're about. It can give you an overall view of what your actual brand's about. Uh, yeah, so regram app is one to look for, otherwise repost apps in general are fine but that's one I like is you can actually do it, it's built into the app so it actually comes up in Instagram which has been a lifesaver for me. Um, the other one is, um, yeah, well Instagram videos, we all probably do it now, you've got that 15 seconds of video that you can do. For brands, that's again, it's like Snapchat, you can give them behind the scenes, you can give them live if you've got events. It just means when people are going through that they're not getting the normal boring pictures, staged pictures and we love pictures of funny stuff, we love pictures of good looking stuff but not. Video sort of wakes people up a little bit. If you go through, it plays and you go, oh, you know, it does give you a little bit more of cut through. Um, and also, again, just giving them behind the scenes looks at what's going on, which sometimes is better than and a picture that they might have seen a thousand times of a pair of shoes or a pair of whatever. If you're showing them the actual store, I usually go if there's new collections in the store, I'll go in, I'll take video of the whole store and tell them to come and look. And then people will go, oh, right, I did not look like that. Or where's that store? Stuff like that, instead of taking a picture of shoes or a jacket that they might see anywhere. Um, I did that when I walk up and down Times Square because it's actually um, a street, it's not a shopping centre, it's a strip. People think it's Claremont Quarter, so to cut that, I walk up the street and take vision. So it's about um, getting through via video that you might not be able to get through with just images alone or collages or pretty pictures. Um, sometimes you can just talk into it if you feel like it, like you've talked into it many a time. You can talk. Snapchat, I talk you can, into it. Oh, you talk into Snapchat, yeah. In, um, you can actually share your videos straight through, as you probably know, from Instagram to Facebook, um, to Twitter. Um, it just means, or Tumblr, again, you can share from Instagram to those other avenues. So that video you take on one can be through to all of them, which saves time as a brand instead of having to do. But try and um, limit sharing everything across all avenues you need to make sure that each social media avenue has something different people don't want to see it shared from if it's just an update shared from facebook to twitter to twitter to tumblr tumblr to Flickr, to all over the place because uh, each of those um, mediums has a different target like twitter is a conversation and that's how mon and i talk a lot on twitter in the beginning when we were trying to um, network bloggers and people twitter is fantastic for that quick conversations gone quick conversations um, whereas Facebook is more about the community, so you're creating a feeling of them coming back and getting information they love and sharing pictures. And, and Instagram is just all visual, or video as I say, it just has to catch them straight away. And I read an article yesterday that said, pictures um, that have more background actually get more uh, likes. You would have thought it would have been those with less, but more um, get Space through. Is good. Yeah, so it all depends. You can do uh, lots of different things. But again, Google it. There's tons of articles on Instagram and best ways to get cut through. Yep. So what do you mean about background? Well, if you have a picture, um, you know, you can make it too busy sometimes. Mm. It just goes over people's head. But also the research was showing, they did a research with a certain set of um, images and then they went on how many likes they got, how many um, comments they got. And they did find that the one with the most amount of likes was actually the picture that didn't have one image and nothing, but yeah. had a nice image, an overall image with different things, not... Okay, yeah. so more background is better. Yeah, and yeah, they showed one... Yeah, 
it's generally there's it's actually so really it's interesting. A hard it's both, yeah. You don't want nothing, but you don't want it too yeah. much. Yeah. Because you can be you can be Margaret Zhang. I don't know. Does anyone follow Margaret Zhang? Mm. Yeah. Okay. She's <laughs> she's like my idol. She's so much younger than me. Um, but she's amazing. Um, and Margaret Zhang does like amazing cluttered kind of crazy pieces, but she does it so well. Um, so she's found her niche there. But then there are other people that find their niche um, in, with Instagram. Um, simplicity. Yeah, simplicity. That. So, yeah. but going back to the whole study thing, mm. they found that I think it's blue yeah. gets the best response. Mm. So anything with a blue kind of hue to it. So you'll find um, if you go through a lot, like uh, some of the uh, Instagrams with higher, um, like a higher number of followers, their Instagram feeds are quite blue or monochrome. So there's lots of blacks, whites, greys, um, and they're always cooler photos. So rather than having like a yellow hue to them, they've all got that kind of blue overtone. Um, so yeah, that always grabs more attention. Um, and as does, like I said, the black and white kind of stuff, or like really, really uh, colourful. So long as you keep it all uniform, yeah, yeah. you and most, start to see. And most Instagram different. pages from brands in particular, they usually have it. They tend to have a look because you've gone through their Instagram page when not just one post but their whole page. You'll see that most of them, um, like based by Ben, you know, Ben yeah. with Revolution the label, black and white is his brand, so nothing but black and white is all I've used. Yeah, so it's about creating that brand if you have a look or yeah. a thing. A lot of people will have a, a brand and they will make sure there's white always around the outside so that when you go through the whole feed, it will always look like pictures are all in the middle. Whereas me, I tend to just go with the flow because I've got so many uh, different retailers and so many different things that it's not actually a look that I'm going for, it's an overall look. So when they go through my feed, you need to be able to see everything all at once. You need to see all the different looks. So we've got hair, we've got beauty, we've got this, we've got that, so it's not just one. But when you've got a yeah, brand in particular, really yeah, when you've got a brand in particular, it takes a lot of effort. Some people actually yeah. spend um, a lot of time making sure they're Instagram. Yeah, not it's just embarrassing one by one. Time where you yeah. spend yeah. curating out Because it is actually their brand. So yeah. your Instagram is your brand. Yeah. yeah. Um, complaints via, oh well, statistics as well, when we're talking about Instagram. Did you know that um, O'Connor Square is where you can go to get your statistics for your Instagram? Not good if you want to see who's unlike you. Yeah, okay. if, if, you're, if, you're, yeah, if you're slightly um, scared of that, don't do it because it gets really personal. Yeah. <laughs> Even as a brand, when people follow you and then all of a sudden they've unfollowed you and you're like, but why? What have I done? You know, it's like a, it's literally like a divorce. So what you do is to get back at them, you go through and unfollow them. So I'm just letting you know, it makes you feel a lot better. Just go back and unfollow them and then you're like, yeah, take that. It's fantastic because you can see you can see your follow rate, your unfollow rate, yeah. um, who you follow, but they're not following you back. Who's following you, but you're yeah. not following them back? Yeah, all and, that sort of stuff too. So. And it also gives you your um, favourite, uh, well, people that comment the most, most engaged. Most engaged. So if you really want to create um, an idea of who's really engaging with your brand, that will give you a good idea. But um, yeah. That's only my business one. I've never gone on for mine. So if you go on for yours, you can find out who yeah. is as your friends. And it gives you your demographics as it well. Does, it does. So yep. you're able to see, I think um, Adele, the other girl that I worked on the Times Square uh, project with, Adele worked out she's got something like 80% uh, of her Instagram, follow, Instagram followers are from WA. So, and then I think her blog is about 90% of her followers are from WA. So it's um it's quite handy um, to work out well to look at obviously your statistics to work out what you should be posting when you should be posting because it tells you again when your followers are most engaged so what times mm. they're like you're getting the most likes for your photos all that sort of stuff so it can be Instagram super strategic nowadays it used to be instant it's not at all. Yeah, it is so strategic. And I kind of swear lets you do campaigns and things as well. I mean, there's a lot to yeah. it, but um, yeah, you can go into it and have a look and see how it works. It was previously Crowdfire. It was uh, um, Statagram. Yeah, it was Statagram. Oh, Crowdfire. Crowdfire yeah, Crowdfire's on phone. Yeah, Statagram, um, and then turned into kind of square. Um, all right, I know we've got. I'm 
run through it quickly. Um, <laughs> Kim, Kim, okay, I'll do these ones quickly. Complaints via social media. Uh, if you have a brand or if you have uh, literally a business, maybe more so than um, bloggers in particular, but if you've got a business, um, you're going to get complaints. Um, they love Facebook, they love complaining. So they're going to get like through to you. The complaints. Yeah, they're going to get through to you every day. They're going to tell you if your parking sucks, if your retail sucks, if your person behind the counter does something wrong. They'll tell you within a minute. So uh, Facebook now tells you if your response rate to um, complaints or, or messages on your page, so be aware that if you don't reply, it will tell people. So my response rate is three minutes because that thing lives on my hand. So if you reply straight away, you dull it. You, you knock it on the head because they've got no comeback. If you come back and you tell them and you deal with it, they can't go nuts. Um, if you don't, they will. They will, they'll keep going and then it'll go from there. So always reply if you can straight away. Um, Coles, did everyone see that? Where they had the caterpillar and the capsicum? No, maybe. And um, the person who posted it did it in a funny way. The social media content person realized that and responded in a funny way. They said, oh my God, you found them. Yeah, you found them. I'm so glad they've got a good home. And you know, like, oh, you know, I can't believe you didn't have cut skin for dinner. Make sure you pop in and grab it. You know, like most most people go, oh, why would you do that? Never. They loved it. it. Went viral. They got so much publicity. It was ridiculous. Mm. Um, on Very another po on a bad side, once I put up a post with a rabbit fur scarf when I first started, um, my Times Square retailer gave it up as a prize. It was their bestseller, the rabbit fur scarf. I put it up as a prize, thinking, well, it's her bestseller, it can't be too bad. Within a minute, I had probably seven videos of uh, rabbits being skinned. Um, I had oh, picture, poppy. which I n will never unsee. Um, and how could you do that Times Square? And oh my God, and that was within two minutes. A minute of the videos, another minute of people already. So because I was on there and I responded within three minutes and I took it down, they said, they're like, oh, thanks Times Square, you know, we appreciate you being, you know, sensitive to these issues. So if you get on it, it stops. If I hadn't responded, oh, my God, I'd be all over the place and Times Square does this and Times Square eats rabbits and time, you know, <laughs> Times Square does this. So as a brand, if you respond straight away, you will, not, you'll, you will get on top of it. Don't ever leave it or don't ever delete it. That's the worst thing. If you delete it, you're just giving them ammunition to go and run you down. So respond to it, deal with it. Even if it's really bad and really mean and whatever, just deal with it. But if you don't and you delete it, that will be it, they will come. And mind you, if threads get threatening or they get violent, yeah, they have to be deleted, but you have to respond to it first. And then you maybe put a post up, it. and then maybe put a post up afterwards saying that we had to delete this, do the, do the, don't just delete it and um, pretend it's not there, they'll come back and get you. Um, literally, scheduling of social media posts. Um, does anyone schedule posts? Does anyone know what scheduling post is? Yeah, do you use, um, what scheduling app do you use? Anything? We just use it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, Facebook yeah. scheduling. Yeah, that's fine. I do that as well when I need to tag in people and things on some. Um, for a lot of the other ones, I use Hootsuite. Um, that's up there. Hootsuite, um, you're able to schedule all of your social media. Okay, so when I've got... Across different brands as well. Yeah, I've got um, probably about eight or nine different um, centres and companies that I have to um, schedule for. So I just have them all on Hootsuite and then I can go through and schedule them all at once. And I can now schedule to Instagram, which you could never do before, which has saved my life. Oh, how did you, did they, oh, oh yeah, when I was last week. You obviously know about the scheduling yeah, yeah, yeah. one on your phone, right? For, For Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Or later grant? No. Um, it's, it's by the same people that did Crab Life. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's now, um, as a business, Hootsuite, you can actually upload your Instagram accounts and schedule to to go back to Hootsuite now. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so Hootsuite is good to do. Multiple accounts you need to pay. It's like $8 a month. And you can have whatever menu you want. If you've only got one, then you don't need to pay. It's free, usually. Um, but that is well worth checking out because you can do um, Google+, Plus, you can do Tumblr, you can do, um, you can do Foursquare, you can do Facebook, everything. And that helps. Uh, Hootsuite's fantastic to help you schedule out. Mm -hmm. Like if you've got four things that you need to get out across all social media platforms. You can schedule them out on different days so that you don't end up Bombing with, people. yeah, you don't end up with, you know, your Facebook going, or your Instagram going, going to your Facebook, going to your Twitter, going to, you know, it's all on different days and you're getting different bits of information on different social media sites. So and it's also what I say to people if you've got a brand is try and create a story. Um, so um, I usually tell people to either visualize or get a big piece of paper and just sit there and schedule out seven days. 
And so I usually do that. So I have like eight o'clock, 11 o'clock, two o'clock, four, you know, all the times. And then what am I gonna say? Today, you know, we've got this going on. Well, this week will all be about this. And schedule your posts so it looks different and you're hitting people at different times. So if you wanna hit people while they're sitting there on the couch, I usually put place of the day. People are sitting there, they're bugger, they've had a shit day at work, they wanna sit down and look at Tahiti and go, oh, that is freaking awesome, I wish I was there. And once we did that, we got, I think it was 20,000, uh, it went viral and we got 20,000 likes because people shared it. And then if people share it, of course it goes on their page and then people share it and it just went off. So sometimes you gotta look at what you're posting, when you're posting it and who you're posting it to. So get a big piece of paper, think about it. Don't just post it as you walk into the bus or you post and walk into there because it's never gonna happen. It's not gonna create a continuity for your brain. So make sure that you always have the bigger picture in everything. And, if, and the bigger picture comes down to linking as well. So on Facebook, make sure you're linking to posts on your blog like Mon does, or Twitter, or Twitter links to Pinterest. Pinterest is another one. You know, and your Pinterest has links to your website. Make sure it all links. But that's where your bigger picture comes in, making sure that everything links to everything and everything has a flow through, whether it be your website, if that's where you want them to go to, make sure everything else links back to that. Um, or if it's vice versa, you want them to go from your website to find your social media, well then make sure your website is full and has all your links and has all links to other stuff. Just make sure you're looking at the bigger picture. Even if it's once a week, for half an hour, sit down, have Monday to Saturday or Monday to Sunday and make sure you can do it. Um, and then the next thing, the social media news sites. Um, I don't know whether you guys are on top of um, Social Media Perth. They have events, free events. Um, for those in the social media industry or those that want to know more. Yeah, so check, networking events. Yep, so. check them out on Facebook. Um, and Mashable, uh, that's our news website, which is what's for all everything, but it does have a huge social media section. That's where you find out about Instagram going to this and that going to this and what brands are using and what works and what doesn't. So try Mashable out. That one is a big one. Oh, um, this is exciting. I like yeah. this next slide. Yeah, which is that one. Yes. Yeah, so this is where Mon comes in with the bloggers. So what we wanted to say was, what do you see from this picture and what do you see as, as what's important about it? Bloggers. Does anyone recognise any of them as well? Who do you recognise? Um, Gareth Abigail. Yep. And Tula Vinci. Yep. And um, her name, Song Star. Song Star. Yeah. Yeah, and the one in the middle was Kiara Ferrani. Oh, and is that Chriselle? Chriselle Lim? Yeah. I can't tell because she's wearing sunglasses. And to be honest, I follow so many, sometimes I get really confused myself. <laughs> um, but um, this is, where is this? This is Front Row, like New York Fashion Week or yeah, something like that. Yeah, Front Row, anywhere. And Front Row at Perth Events, you'll see Mom. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's in the Sunday Times, in the What's About section. You know, she's everywhere. Because she is our version of, of these girls. Thanks. Yes, I love it. I see her everywhere. But um, so what we wanted to talk, what I wanted to get Mon to talk about was the rise of the influencer and the super blogger. Yeah. Um, so in the local area, Mon is a super blogger. So in like internationally, these girls these are These girls it. are it, yeah. So the two girls on the very end, Nicole Warren and Tula Vintage are Australian. So this is their following. And yeah, this is their following. So this is the front row at a um, fashion show. Combined, they have 20 million people that will see whatever has gone through their Instagram at that moment. So, for a company, that sort of number is incredible, it's immeasurable. Like, you'd never I, get to it by yourself. Yeah, you'd never ever, like the New York Fashion Week Instagram account, you would never ever get that sort of reach. So, these ladies, um, I guess a lot of them now, um, are called super bloggers because they kind of actually don't really blog anymore but they are faces and brands so they are representing whatever brand asks them to work for them so for example New York Fashion Week have asked them to come along because they're rec recognizable faces in the front row they're fantastic ambassadors but they also have that massive massive audience that they need which you will not get from asking a photographer along or for asking I don't know I guess if you asked, um, what's the Kardashians name? <laughs> I'm so Which good one? at this. Yep. Anyway, if you asked any of the Kardashians along, I know. you would get that. I know all the Kardashians. <laughs> you would get that, general. but they're not. Uh, I think the, the key to these girls is that they're personable and they started from, like, Nicole Warren started from taking photos on a jetty wearing op shop things. 
Um, and they had the right following because the people that followed them love fashion. So New York yeah. Fashion Week obviously want to get to those people. Yeah, so they're, they're very targeted. I mean, sometimes, um, I guess now with the um, increase in popularity of using bloggers and social media and using that kind of influencer, which I hate that word, but using that status um, of these girls, you know, some of them have done Colgate ads and stuff like that. Um, there's, I guess there's a fine line between what you will and won't do for the money. <laughs> um, but these girls, um, Chiara Ferrani in the middle is, uh, she was an Italian girl, she's now living in LA. She has her own shoe label. Um, she is flying, like she jet sets everywhere. She's currently in, uh, this is scary how much I know about all their lives. Um, she's currently in Bali and she's staying at the Malia and she's done an Instagram takeover of the Malia Bali. Um, but she is worth $3 billion. So what we were talking about before Social is media. free advertising versus paid advertising. So with bloggers, it's not a matter of, hey, come to my event and yeah, um, get free champagne and a blog about my event doesn't happen anymore. Um, what well, shouldn't have happened anyway. Um, if you're gonna use people, you need to be able to use them as a brand ambassador or, or some sort of form where you're um, using them for their time because um, they're not just gonna come to an event for a free champagne, they get plenty of that, don't you? Um, so that's how um, Monique and I work with Times Square. Um, it was a matter of, um, they're called collaborations. So really it's a brand collaborating with um, a blogger, whether it be a fashion blogger, a food blogger, a lifestyle blogger, any blogger. Um, if your brand has a good association with their target market, that's who you need to go. Um, so we find it cost effective um, and it's a targeted reach for brands. So you're getting to a specific market that's already there, it's already established. Um, if you're a new brand, you don't have that. You don't have that market. Um, you, you might get it. Um, when Times Square started, we had zero. Now we've got over, what, 8,000 people on Facebook. But we had zero to begin with. So these bloggers already had that market, which is why on Twitter I stalked all of them. And I stalk, it's just, when you're a new brand, you need to stalk them. You literally need to stalk them. It's not so, hard to stalk us, by the way. No, so, <laughs> or stalk anyone, or stalk um, other people that use your brand. Like, um, I've got a brand that um, is for parents, mums in particular. So, hashtag mummy bloggers, hashtag mums, hashtag babies, they'll find you. So, make sure you're using the right hashtags as well when you're doing anything, because people will find you, and you will find brand ambassadors you're yeah. happy to work with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's where the rise of the brand uh, blogger brand ambassador. Um, Mon does work for brands in particular, whether it's a promoted post or whether it's um, she's got the Volvo at the moment going around doing the blogger. What is it? Blogger, blogger drive? drive. The blogger drive. So all different bloggers got given a Volvo for a couple of weeks, yeah. and they've now got a drive in it. Go around and so so, and that that that's actually an interesting one because Volvo. I don't know if you guys have know that they're generally known as boring, safe foxes, basically. So they're obviously trying to break out of that um so they've gone well hey how can we do this let's give the keys to a whole group of young bloggers um and get them to drive it around and you know create a post or um i think it will get like a aggregate on instagram through a certain hashtag of how they integrate it into their everyday lives and because we're young and use it in a different way they have all this content that is slowly changing the perception of what a Volvo is and who it's for. Same, does anyone know Gage Roads Brewery? Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. I like you, I like I you too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? I work there. Oh, fantastic, well this is good. <laughs> I didn't know about Gage Roads for a very long time. I thought it was a new brand. It is not, it has been around for a very, very long time, but they have so cleverly changed their social media presence. They've so cleverly changed the way they go out and integrate with people, who they engage. Um, and they are now coming across as a, new, a fun, fresh, new brand. Well, they're not new, it's just a rebrand. Um, but, you know, they're up there with all the other craft beers now because they've cleverly engaged the right people and um, they're, yeah, they're going the, through the right avenues to change their brand. I'm getting distracted now. Anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah. You continue on. No, that's I fine. got yep. distracted. It's but <laughs> um, yeah, so it's about just um, if you've got a brand that needs to reposition itself, then that's the way to do it. A brand um, ambassador will help you do that and hit another market. So that's sometimes that's a good I was way. Going to get that. Yeah, see, that's fine. You, we're, yeah. we're like that. We're in sync. Um, so if you find somebody that works well with you, um, stay with them. Don't flit around and go around all different things because you mm. can create a consistency. Like Monique and I've been together for a while now, but then when we came to doing a collaboration, people already knew we had a, 
a valid relationship, so they trusted it. It's not like I just paid somebody out of the blue because they were cool at the time. They knew that we had a vested interest and that Monique had actually been part of the Times Square journey for a while. So uh, that's something to think about. Don't just grab people because they're cool. Make sure that you've got a, a relationship because people will trust it more. They won't just think that this person's been paid just yeah. off the back to go and do it. They've got to have some sort of fickle. Yeah, they're, people are a bit fickle like that, so you've got to be careful. Um, now, the Times Square Blogger Catch-Up event was something that we did. Um, uh, I do as Times Square. I've done for a couple of years now. I invite all the bloggers down, but not for any event as such that's mine, just to get together. So it's, I invite them down to Times Square and invite all the bloggers, new, sorry, new ones, old ones, um, and they all come down. Um, so what I get is a relationship, like I'm talking about with uh, keeping bloggers. If, meet new ones, meet people, get out there. Like don't just sit in an office. You need to get out there, you need to make relationships. And it's super, it's key because our personalities are what is people resonate with because we are our own brands as bloggers. So going out and actually meeting people like Nicola is what gets you the job because your personality comes across. So even for us, we can't just sit behind the screen and expect the jobs to come to us. You've got to, we've got to go and network. So, and that's a very, very important thing because my personality, you know, suits the Times Square brand personality. Mm. And we wouldn't know that if we hadn't been working no. together. So, And that's why brands need to reach out. You need to reach out and find um, a bloggers that suit your brand or just have, like we've been having these every quarter and I just get to talk to them, and plus they get to talk to each other. So bloggers that never met have all met, and then they so go out and do their own things. Yeah, see? So bloggers will, and then what they do is they all get together, and then they all have fond memories of Times Square, and then they blog about Times Square, and it's not a paid thing. It's a, we think this is a pretty cool place. So I don't do it for that reason, but it's a good offset from it. And you think of, um, a cost, talking about cost effectiveness, so I pay $90 for coffees and food, right? Out of that, I can get blogs and Instagram posts all over the place. Um, but ones from happy bloggers that are like, wow, this is cool, this is whatever, not about a brand in particular. So your name gets out there, people are like, what is this place? Why, do, why are they doing that? I should go to the next one. And then people are like, oh, when's your next one? Can I come? And so you, you create that thing. It's about thinking outside the square. Times Square has no money. We are tiny. Claremont Quarter has lots of money. So the only thing that I had was me. So I'm like, well, frig it, I'm going to go out there and do it then. So 90 bucks, I can afford that. I'll go and stand there and talk to a bunch of cool chicks and try and get... Oh, thanks. It's just a cool chick. And try and get out there. So the next thing you know, you know, every event you have, you invite them, they come. They do, they can't give them away. They come for the free champagne and just to hang out with me, um, which, you know, is the big reason. Um, isn't it? It is. Yes. I'm not, I'm not. It's true. Um, so then I have photos with all of them. Next thing you know, you know, you become You're famous. A I am famous, <laughs> I know. And then somebody came up to me and went, oh my God, are you Nicola? And I went, yeah, oh, bully, like on Instagram. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. I'm like so old and like so cool. <laughs> so I'm not into fashion, never have been into fashion. I'm a shopping centre marketing manager. All of a sudden, I'm the queen of WA fashion and I'm like at all these freaking events. And I'm like, when the hell did that happen? But the next thing you know, they're inviting you to events. Times Square all of a sudden gets invited into the style circle, which is like you only have to be invited. Are you in the style circle? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're together. Um, so that was me, meaning I made it. I finally got an invite into the elusive style circle, which you only have to be invited to. Oh! <laughs> and then I couldn't go because I was sick. Oh, shit me off. I just send my bloggers, my other bloggers. Um, so yeah, that's what you do. Get into it. If you don't have money, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, it's not about money, it's about relationships Experience. and network. Times Square has no money, but we have a bigger following than Clement Quarter does. So, and when people yes. are in Clement Quarter, no, you work for Clement Quarter now. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Um, but Clement Quarter yeah. online, people tag Times Square when they're in the middle of Clement Quarter. And people tag Clement Quarter and then they're in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> Freaking weak. So, hence, let's get on to the so next ridiculous. bit because it's nearly five. Um, after the blogger catch-ups, we've made relationships. Relationships turn into opportunities. Opportunities turn into campaigns. So, social media campaign. Come find us, TSC. Monique, Adele and I, um, my two favourite bloggers, met up at Sun Chitterals and had some hot chocolate and I said, I can't get anyone to find my shopping centre. I can't get anyone to find it. You know where it is? I know where it is. No one else knows where it is. I bet you guys. No one knows where it is. So I've got no money, I can't do TV, I can't do full page press ads, I can't do radio, I can't do anything. So how am I going to get them there? All I had was my social media reach. 
So how was I going to get it out there so that people realised, even people who followed me thought, they follow Times Square, they get my e-newsletters, they follow me on everything, they still think I'm Claymore Porter. So how are you supposed to battle that? Like literally, I did a survey and I said, name your three favourite Times Square stores. They said David Jones, Zimmerman <laughs> and JB Hi-Fi. Oh, yeah, no, that's Claymore Porter. So these are people that follow me. So you see what I'm saying? Like it's hard. Like yeah. so, social is media tough, right? is the only thing that I had. So I brought in my two favourite bloggers who had reached the people I was trying to get to, and I said I can't get them to. I want them to come find me. That was all I said. I want them to come find me and be able to walk up and down the street to realise it's a street. It's not a shopping centre like Claremont Quarter. So that's when we came up. The girls went away, and um, we came up with the just literally come find us. Come find us, but come find us TSC. So it was our own hashtag, heaps of come finders out there. So come find us TSC. I led up to it before the campaign launch with everything. You know, I went down with my thing and took video of me walking up and down the thing. And all you can hear is this, because, you know, it was it was me doing it. But, you know, just sort of saying, look, here we are, off, you know, St. Quentin's. Here we are. Look, here I am walking down the freaking street. Like, like I'm literally, it was that basic. I had to walk down the street to show them that it's a street, it's not that one over there. And I had to literally show them that centre and then say, not that. <laughs> so the new one is hashtag not Clement Porter, hashtag just saying. So that's my latest thing. Everything uh -huh. is just hashtag not Clement Porter, just saying, come find us TSC. So it was a matter of getting them. And so the blogger catch ups were um, also a way of doing that, but. Um, a lead up, this is what we yeah, a lead up to that was getting them there and then saying from here to here is Times Square, over there is Claremont Quarter, don't forget. And then I would walk them down like you do when you do those Trafalgar tours, you know, with the umbrella and all that. So I would walk them down the street, I would walk them in and out of every store so they could blog and take photos and you've been to them and take photos. And then they would blog them and they would talk about them and they would show the stores. So that again, cost effective, $90. Time, yes, maybe my time, but um, that's all I had. Claremont Quarter um, weren't personable. I was personable. I was there. I was there at every event. I was there. They could see it. It had a face. So that's what we won um, our Digital Marketing Award for last year was the um, Bloggers Who Brunch, was all those blogger events we had. And we had all stores opening up. Yep, so we'll show, we'll show one of them. Um, this um, was trying to get people to realise the street. So all of these went over all social media. We launched them. Uh, they ran for a week, one each day, and now they run um, at different times. Yep. But um, it's just a matter of getting that hashtag out there and getting them to walk down the street. So um, the hashtag was out there. People were realising people loved the campaign. Didn't they? They loved yeah. it. Their views were huge. And, and um, I think the benefit for Nicola having got myself and Adele in to do it is again the fact that my kids are sitting here in this. And just when I was putting it up in the same big place, and they're like, What is that noise? Yeah, it's kind but of it's really, when you see one, it's fine. But when you're playing all 10, one after the other, it's a little bit. Um, but yeah, so having Adele and I, I mean, we both, I think. Between the two of us, we've got about 12,000 followers on Instagram. Um, so, oh, a for, <laughs> for nice. Nicola, that kind of obviously opened up her campaign to 12,000 people that she might not have had on there. And so the response that we got, and it's it's also a good, um, using using social media and using bloggers or people who are you know social media specialists, is fantastic for businesses because the feedback that you get compared to like a mail drop or I don't know a billboard ad you can't see who's seen that you can't see you know um, how many people are seeing that versus how much you paid therefore you know cost per view um, whereas uh, using something on social media everything's trackable you can see how many people have viewed the videos the comments that we were getting back the number of people that came up to Adele and I and like oh my gosh that stuff you did, you did for Claremont Quarter was amazing. <gasps> See? Claremont Quarter. Claremont Quarter. Like, See? This is what Times Square, saying. you've seen it though. You know <laughs> what it is. See? <laughs> I'm telling you. Four years in job. Oh my God. <laughs> but they, you do kind of get that real sort of feedback. So, yeah, I Sorry, wasn't going to tell you that. <laughs> well, they've seen it. So, no, they have but seen But this it. is what we came up with. Okay. It was basically 10, 15 second videos. So, they Instagram. Instagram, then. 
Um, and it was just a bit of a mystery kind of behind it saying, come and find it, you know. Ooh, a little teaser. <laughs> yep, so it was a matter of just getting them um, 15 seconds each one. Each one was going into a different funny. target of store. Um, that was our photo shoot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so each one was a different target. Lifestyle, food, fashion. Yes, same one. Yeah, same so This one is a dance. Yeah, I know. I don't know why you chose that. Yeah, sure. I know. But yeah, so it always started and ended with the hashtag and it was a matter of just getting little ones out. I didn't bore people. It wasn't home for minutes. It was just 15 seconds that went off. Mm, then I promoted... What's up, guys? I'm Kobe Person. How is it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool topic. Yeah. Oh. No, what, did people watch that? Did you see that? I've got boys. Oh, and <laughs> girls. I don't know. Yeah. Mine are too busy spending my money on Minecraft. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we did. And we had Minecraft, good in the room. Yeah. I know all about it. Diamond axes and picks and all that sort of stuff. I'm all up to date. Um, <laughs> I'll blog about Minecraft next. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's probably a market for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, market for eight, eight to twelve year old boys there is. Um, yeah, so that is the problem. I told you it's still a problem. It's going to be a problem for a while. But the implementation was at least just, it's, you can see it's starting to work. Well, it is working. Yeah, so, it's just getting traffic back down there. So the reach is there. We've reached the people. We've got the comments. We know they've seen it. It's just a matter of uh, re iterating it and continuing to get people down there. I think so. that's the hardest thing in social media for a physical store or a physical presence. Like I've done social media for uh, restaurants and stuff like that. And I remember one guy cracking the shits at me. He was like, oh, why, are we getting so, why aren't we getting all the likes and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, is that really what you're after? To be honest with you, if you're a physical presence, the most important thing is getting the people down there. Like, Yes, people are excited about it and they're seeing it and they're commenting on it and that's fantastic. They were, but he was just, I don't know, he just didn't understand social media. Um, but at the end of the day, for a physical presence, you know, there's that extra step of trying to get the people. And that's where your problems are. I mean, yeah, that's the hardest part. And you can also lead them to water, but you can't let them drink. So I can yeah. get them down there, it doesn't mean they're going to spend money. Yeah, so, but um, you but can make them aware of it. Yeah, we should certainly do So, that. yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that. So now it's... Question and answer time if you have any or Ask want any, any or questions. do any or how long did it take you to get to where you are now? Um, I've been blogging for five years. So I You're actually like a baby. Yeah. Um, I'm twenty five, I just um, turned twenty five on the first of August. Okay, Happy birthday me. Um, <laughs> but I started I actually started my blog when I was in uni, um, because I applied for a PR job or a PR internship and uh, I went to the interview and I I didn't even study PR. Um, but she, I was like, why not? You know, what, what the worst I can say is no. Ended up getting the job. But she was uh, asking me a lot of questions. And this is when blogs were kind of starting to make a bit of an appearance on the scene. And yeah, it wasn't. Five years ago. Five years ago, it wasn't there. But she, she was onto it. And she was like, oh, so do you know anything about blogs and blah, blah, blah? And I was like, no, no, don't know any of this. So I went home and I was like, well, clearly if I want a job like this, this is what I'm going to have to learn. So I started a blog up and literally for the last five years, it has been me trial and error, Googling, talking with my friends who uh, we've got a very, very supportive uh, network at the moment. So there's four of us girls that work really, really closely together. And outside job, of that, job now though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And outside of that, I mean, you can see sitting up the back there. <laughs> there's another blogger in the back of the room. Um, <laughs> but, you know, outside of that, we have a very supportive network. We've got, um, a Facebook group with I think 735 uh, bloggers from WA and it's all um, yeah we're all kind of working together but for me to get to this point now where I'm actually being paid to do things um, it's been in the last six to twelve months um, things have been growing exponentially for us um, and I think that is also due to the fact that people are starting to really recognize uh, the the need or what yeah the benefits of what we can do for them so before then you know yes we're getting collaborations people were wanting to send us stuff and like fuck off 
with the stuff. I don't need it. <laughs> what was it? Um, water once. Remember, you guys oh, got water oh, or something? Yeah, have water. We get ridiculous requests all the time. But, um, yeah, so to get to where we are now, it's only really been the last six to 12 months. But in those six to 12 months, the workload compared to, you know, the four years that I was doing it prior is ridiculous like I, I walked in here today mm. and Nicola was like how are you doing and I was like oh my god I can't go to what I'm supposed to go to tonight because I ah. like yeah it's ridiculous <laughs> so hope that answered your question a little bit but it took us five years <laughs> of, of hard work yeah yes have you guys report on your performance um, for a brand, um, yeah, we have uh, the statistics from Facebook, the statistics, Google analysis. Um, it's just a matter of, and there's one called SEM Rush, which is a new one as well, where you can put your website in and then you can gain the, um, it's a paid one, but you can get 10 free ones where you can put your um, website in and see where all your, where your competitors sit and where you sit. Um, that's a new one that's been brought to my attention, but normally it's a matter of um, really getting in deep with the um, analytics of things and finding out where people are coming from. Your main, um, your main objective is really to get organic reach, so that's what we try hard on. Um, we try to make sure that our organic reach increases each month because we want to make sure that we're not just paying for everything, that we're actually getting traction, word of mouth and things that are getting out there on their own. Um, so that's what we work on. As a blogger, reporting back to brands, very much the same. So we use Google Analytics um, just to let them know, you know, how many hits, how many people have actually gone to that page. Um, and I also obviously like to give them numbers of likes if it was an Instagram thing, um, the sort of comments that people are leaving. Um, so even things like um, I, I put just an Instagram post up when I went to the flower factory the other day. They have wine on tap anyone's excited about that you should go see it it's pretty fun um, but they have wine on tap and I put that on Instagram and on Facebook and people went mental they were commenting and you know people wanted it in their, wanted it in their house and blah 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 and that is the sort of feedback that I think is really important to give to a brand so it didn't matter if there was you know 17 likes on the on the Facebook page it was the sort of comments that I thought, thought was most important to give back to the brand so I think for us, it's more about um, like when we report on how the collaboration's gone, um, you know, we can say to them, people responded really, really well to it. Um, or, you know, I've seen this many sales go through, I've seen this many hits. Um, it's a good combination of it all, so yeah. Zip. Yeah, you put your hand up first. Yeah. There's so many social media assets, um, as a general rule of thumb, how do you know when not to use certain ones? Oh, you mean instead of having just something for, on everything? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really going to be, um, as, a, as a brand or as a shopping centre or any of my ones, it's really about where you get the most reaction, where, yeah. where, where you're, like for say, small shopping centre, uh, Facebook, because that's where your mum and dads are and that's where people yeah. are active. Facebook doesn't work. They tried one at Livingston and I think I won everything because I was the only one that had an Instagram account. Um, they were trying to launch an Instagram account, but um, you know, a neighborhood shopping center, it's not, it's not Facebook. where you need to spend your time because yeah. you've got, like you're saying, you've got to realize you've only got so many hours. Uh, Times Square's a bit difficult because they're over everything. So literally I was on everything. So we were on every single avenue there was, even on Polyvore and creating collages and you know, it, it was just, you could go nuts. You could yeah. literally go nuts. We had to scale it back a bit and just say, look, yeah. Instagram is Quality huge for us. And just say, let's concentrate on Instagram, which is why we did the videos. They're Instagram specific. And then they would flow through to Facebook and then Facebook would hit those that didn't hit Instagram. Twitter is usually, um, is usually for conversations. So if I want to hit up something real quick and just say, um, you know, got this going on or that or whatever, but yeah, try and stick with the main three and then the other ones are offshoots of that. Yeah, like Tumblr, we're on, but Tumblr is just a follow through because um, I'm not really getting any traction from Tumblr. Same with Google Plus, we get quite a quite a few, but that again, I schedule from Hootsuite. So that all comes through that one thing. But then you go over to Google Plus and you see there are quite a few people on there, but I don't tend to get as much as I get from the others. Yeah, as, so a general, general, as a general consensus, like amongst the girls that I talk to with blogs, we find that the most important ones to us, um, there's a little bit of a flow through. So you have your blog, which is basically like your portfolio. It's your online portfolio. That's where all your writing or all your content sits. That's where all your photography sits. It's where all your information sits, all the link backs, all that sort of stuff. So 
it's like, yeah, it's literally your portfolio. And then from there, um, we put a link, like anytime we post something new, we'll put a link on our Facebook page and, um, you know, say, have a bit of a conversation and say, oh, you know, new post. Go see, see yeah, go, go see the new post. And then um, we also put something on Instagram. So we find that the flow through goes from people see your Instagram and then they'll go through to your blog. Um, so you'll find most of your comments are on your Instagram post as opposed to your blog. Same with Facebook, they'll either, they'll either be directed to your blog from one of those two. Um, Twitter, I don't even use, I don't even look at because it's too time consuming. I've got to focus, I've got to focus on the visual stuff because blogs are hugely visual at the moment. And can I jump so, in with Twitter as well? Twitter now, um, it is time consuming, but if you have the time, uh, you need to upload images directly to Twitter. Yeah, if otherwise you don't, no one opens it. If you don't, don't it, no one will touch it. Um, so you have to go in every day and I have to upload an image of yeah. something. Because as you scan, do you guys scan Twitter? Do you just go down? Do you normally look at the ones with pictures on it? Like it gives you your visual, otherwise the rest yeah. of them just uh, sort of go away. So We live in a visual world. Yeah. So, if you're, so Twitter's realised that and they've made yeah. it. used to be that Instagram would open automatically until they separated ways. And now yeah. your Instagram pictures don't open automatically. As you know, you have to link on it since they had that break up. Um, so now it's a real pain. You have to actually go and upload it, and you have to upload a picture that is land, like landscape, um, because anything bigger gets cut off. So when it views, so you have to make sure they're like Facebook style. Yeah. Uh, when you upload Instagram pictures. Style. Yeah. That's cheaper. Yeah. So you can't have an Instagram picture. You have to go in and literally cut it to make it go like that if you want it to show um, as an instant. Otherwise, they, again, they have to click on the picture to open it. They don't do that. Nobody, nobody cares about that. You had a question. Now, compared to more traditional advertising, like on the newspapers, television, mm -hmm. paid for, uh, just how effective is this kind of advertising? Oh, as a brand, amazingly. Um, Facebook um, promoted posts. Facebook, um, I spend all my money on promoted posts and promoted pages um, because that's where I get my cut through. If I'm doing an event, if I'm doing something, I will spend most of my money on um, promoting a post for that event or promoting something for that because um, press ads, you know, they're still good. Like for my shopping centres, they're still okay. Like neighbourhood that's shopping centres still need to have ads usually in press yeah. because uh, they've got seniors and they've got, you know, mums and things, but like a Times Square, you know, you know, if you were gonna go in, you'd go in more like a Scoop magazine or something like that, where people still love to have that visual of touching it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely um, where I have most of my spend. I can yeah. spend probably $1,000 a month of a budget um, just on promoting post. So that means promoting post uh, maybe one a day, one or two a day, and then promoting the page itself. Um, because if you've got a page, that's great. If no one sees it, who cares? So you've got to do a promoted page. And usually it ends up being a dollar a like. So you can spend $1,000 to get a page up to 1,000 likes. Um, so if you've got a new business, I would probably factor in $1,000 to get your, web page, uh, your Facebook page up to where it needs to be, that people will look at it and go, oh, it's actually an okay page. Um, but yeah, as a business, I'm saying, um, that's usually what you would do. I usually put between $500 and $1,000 for monthly Facebook advertising. I usually find that my, um, my argument when brands want to work with us, um, you know, my argument is that social media, you know, is there, or social media or a blog, a blog post, it's there forever. Maybe not social media, but our blog post, it's there forever. I've got stuff from back when I started five years ago. And if you type in the right search terms, you're continuously going to find that. So if you're going to pay, for example, um, $750 for a nice in-depth blog post, that's going to be there forever. It's searchable. There's SEO back to your website. Um, people can continuously go back to it. Um, it's targeted if you're going to put money behind it or if you're, even if you're not, you know, like I have my own target market. So if you choose me, you're, you're accessing my target market and you can pinpoint that mark, target market. You can track how many people have seen it, how much um, yes. reach it's got. Press is so hard. Press, if you spend $1,000 on an ad this big, who knows who's seen it. Yeah, and people look at it, close the newspaper, put it away. We used to have cut so, out coupons on press to try and get a return you know, to, on investment and you'd only ever get probably 10 within 100. 
Um, so it, it that's was, the only way you can measure it. Yeah, and because we would do it as a way for them to come into the shopping centre to see what the return would be. Whereas Facebook, it's now targeted posts. So we target if I'm doing an April handball comp. So at one of my centres, well then I can go to each Facebook page for the local clubs, post it there. I can go to the local um, forum community pages. I can post it there, which means it gets to every single person in that. Um, again, stalking. You, you can just join the, I've joined the community page for the Perth Hills because we've got Mundaring Shopping Centre. The Ellenbrook community page because I've got an Ellenbrook Shopping Centre. You need to know what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So if they're talking about my shopping centre, I'm going to hear it and I'm going to respond straight away. Mm -hmm. Again, they don't know who the hell I am, but I've got, or they do now, I think. I think they've gotten onto it. Um, <laughs> when I start going, oh my God, did you see what that village has got this going on? Oh my oh God, God that's it's amazing. amazing. Oh, look, it's amazing. <laughs> um, but a lot of them will only put up free stuff, so it's only if I've got seniors there or a handball comp. They don't want advertising, so you've got to do it very specifically. But that's the sort of stuff you can target on Facebook. You can't do that with an ad. So that's why I'd rather spend my time and my money doing that if I could, because you will get a better response and people will share and, you know, and it doesn't cost as much. It doesn't all, cost yeah. as much. I mean, a, face, yeah. a press ad can cost you about three and a half grand for a full page at least, but, you know, on a small paper. Three and a half grand is worth of Facebook advertising. Crikey, up, you hit the moon and back. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, just, you got to think about who you're trying to get to. Yes, yeah, you're limited. Yeah, so I know you briefly just touched on it, but um, I know you get your cut through on new customers through advertising or uh, allocating a budget to advertising on Facebook. Mm. But um, I've noticed that obviously you, if you have, say, a thousand likes, your kind of reach rate on that might only be about 10% or even lower perhaps. Yeah. How much of a priority do you place on hitting those uh, previous likes that, against your budget? For me, that's where my money goes into uh, promoted posts, hitting those that like the page um, because they've taken the time to like it. So I've got 8,000 likes on Times Square. If I don't do a promoted post, I can maybe hit 25 of them. So that's 25 out of 8,000 people who have already decided that they wanted to follow my page. So Facebook have got us over a barrel. Um, so my idea is to try and make content that gets organic reach. So I spend my time in making sure that the content that goes up will get high reach Facebook algorithms or whatever it is. It'll go through and try and filter out those that's crap and looks like advertising as opposed to those that is more interesting, uh, links to something else that's interesting. Um, so that's where I spend my time. And the ones that I want to make sure that they have to get out there, well then, yeah, I will spend my money making sure that it hits those that like my page. And then if I will go against that, it'll be those that like my page plus their friends. So I tend to do that as opposed to targeting for Times Square because their friends are usually the same. You know, if you're looking at 20 to 25 year old girls, most of their friends are in the same bracket. So if I'm hitting them and their friends, and you know, you've seen it on your Facebook page, Joe Blog likes whatever, and you go, well, why do they like it? You, you, you can't, you have. Underneath you've gone, why do they like it? Like, should I like it? Like, and then the amount of times I've gone, why do they like that? And I've clicked on it and gone, oh. You know, because you've got that word of mouth. It's like them saying something without actually having to say it. You know, it's saying your best friend likes what's its face. Well, why do they like it? You know, they've obviously taken the time to press it. So it's that sort of word of mouth that can get you the extra likes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, that's the problem. You've got 8,000 likes and, you know, 25 people will see it that, that organically. Sort of, um, that return rate is what we try and really push as well because I know for a fact that there are Perth, like, what is really there are people in Perth that are Insta famous, probably, mm. um, and you know they've got six million followers or whatever on Instagram, and then they'll have people sending them, I don't know, candles to promote on their Instagram. But out of those six million people, how many of those people are going to purchase from your Australian website that candle? Because how many of those people are not seedy old men that are perving at your tits because you've got them out all the time? So that sort of return rate you've really got to look at and be careful about, um, which is where we find, like what I find for myself is that I'm quite a relatable blogger, so people um, relate to me for my personality, not because I've got a killer body or because- She does so. <laughs> Thanks. I've seen it. <laughs> um, in Lululemon yeah. stuff. <laughs> I was gonna say that she sounds really weird. She came to my blogging catch up in Lululemon <laughs> stuff on her way to a shoot in Lululemon. I was gonna say that sounds really freaking weird. Yeah, I know, um, we're close to <laughs> But yeah, that sort of return rate um, is really important uh, when you're a brand and you're trying to work with people and brand ambassadors. You want to make sure that you're going to get the most for your brand because the people that are following that person are actually genuine followers or genuinely interested in what you're interested in. And you know that Facebook and Instagram went through and trying to out all the fake 
accounts. You probably saw like Times Square lost a few thousand, a few, a few hundred here and there, and Facebook did the same. So um, they, they're trying to stamp out that where people are buying likes because I mean you've probably seen accounts you know so four and a half that you got fourteen and a half thousand people following you and you've got like two two pictures on your page and you're like well yeah it you know you got to be relatable so even though on Instagram I've got what um, nearly three thousand followers I know they're all followers you know they're people that are interested to be there and you can usually tell by the amount of likes you get as well yeah if you've got fourteen and a half thousand followers and you get like twenty likes on a picture they're not real followers. So just look at it, a brand when you go through and see what their likes are as opposed to, you know, if they're liking each picture. If they're not getting likes, well, then they're all fake. They're all fake followers, um, which you don't want to be part of. You know, they've got 14,500, but if none of them are watching, it doesn't matter. And Instagram and Facebook, try and make sure that you're posting at different times um, because, you know, the person that's on Facebook in the morning might not be on at night and vice versa. So make sure you're hitting throughout the week, like I said, scheduling. Make sure you're hitting at one time they'll see you. You know, at one time, whichever time it is, make sure that they see you at least once a day. Um, so I usually do four a day. But that's because I've got different retailers. It's different when you've got one brand. I usually only do two a day if I've got one brand that I'm marketing for. One in 11, one at five, or one at two, one at eight. You know, make sure it, um, you know, and do quotes and places and make it a community and it's funny and all that sort of stuff. Yes, any other ones? Oh, we've got two. Sorry, I have one that might be a little little sensitive, but I'm just kind of wondering Oops. what the what the financial cost is for a company to collaborate with a blogger over a duration of time. Uh, it's usually per hour, so whatever their rate is per hour, and they'll just give you a quote based on how many hours they can see that they'll be working on. For uh, if you're doing a shoot, um, if they've got to go and do hair and makeup and things like that, they'll usually give you um, perceived value as well. Perceived value, yeah. And then obviously you as a brand can say to them, well, look, you're collaborating, so they're going to be getting something out of it as well. So it depends what you've got that they can be um, that they can get something out of, um, and then it can be a joint collaboration, or whether it's just a purely paid a purely paid one that will influence the amount that you pay. Um, but usually it's per hour. I think um, you can probably give a better indication. Yeah, it's very. It's a question that everyone wants to know. All the bloggers always ask, "How much do you charge?" Yeah, because I mean it's hard for them to know. I yeah, and I, I always say to people, um, "I'm I charge what a I feel I'm worth, and b it's up to my discretion what I charge each company because some companies have more to offer me than um, others do." So. If it's a company that I really, really want to work for, like I send out my, I send out my rate card, um, and I'm cheeky. We're all cheeky. Um, I send out my rate card, and my rate card basically says if you want to collaborate with me on a blog post, I charge between four hundred and fifty and fifteen hundred dollars. So then it involves discussion. So we can, I can ascertain what their budget is, and then I can go, okay, if that's how much they've got to spend with me, this is what I can do for them. And then I'll pitch my story and say, okay, well, if your budget's such and such, how about we go with this? And generally, like, I have an idea in my mind of what sort of work I can do for different different costs. And I, you know, I will accept jobs um, at lower than four hundred and fifty dollars if I decide that I really want to work with that brand because they're definitely going to rebrand my photo and they've got hundreds of thousands of followers and that's going to benefit me. Um, or, for example. Um, I don't know, a company might not want to pay me to start with, but I know that there's going to be longevity in that collaboration and eventually they will end up paying me. So it's kind of, it, at the moment, and this is where it's really, really hard because it is such a new industry and people are kind of starting to dabble in it. We're still learning. We're still learning. So we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants and, um, you know, we know what we we need to get for the number of hours that we put into a blog post but it just all depends and it's i guess it's kind of um it's it's more of a um we we quote just based on the job so it's a per job basis we can't really say what we charge but for for nicola that was a one-off yeah. um uh so that one and i'm amazing so yeah and nicola did say obviously their budget at Times Square was nothing. was nothing, so we had to work within that as well. Um, but yeah, for for a longer term collaboration, like my collaboration with 
uh, Claremont Border works on a, I do two posts a month for them and I get a set amount uh, per month for that, you know, for those posts. So. And that includes you taking photos? Yeah, that includes me going content. down, taking photos. Because people think you just sit there for five minutes and write like three paragraphs. Mm. And I think that's where the older people that may not be so in tune with how long it takes. Yeah. If you've actually sitting there, you, you might have written your own blog post, you know how long it takes. The, I mean, they go down and take photos, they edit the photos, they put them all up, they're, oh. It takes it's, about, it's about, if, you, if you're going to put in a good effort with your blog post, it takes about a day to, by the time you've, um, Sourced a location, sourced a photographer, um, you know, put together your outfit, done your hair and makeup, gone down, shot it all, um, edited the photos, uploaded all the photos, done uh, done all the content for it, and then you know, schedule all your social media after that. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into that, and I think that's where people get shocked when you send them your rate card and they're like, oh, oh, we don't have that sort of budget. You should do that for free. I'm going to give you a pair of jeans. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to send you a glade candle. You should use it in one of your blogs. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> so people have to get more up to date now with the fact yeah. that it's actually a job. It's not just someone just, you know, they want to get free stuff. It's actually a job. They're actually like a new age journalist for a brand. Yeah, we're, we're a related we're a brand. journalist. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you have a question that you want to ask. So um, many. Yeah, um, go. I don't know if this is on anyone else's uh, Minds, but I'm keen for a social blogger for new ideas and creative innovation. Uh, I've been trying to create an Instagram community around uh, cool photos and stuff like that, that people are, and comments that people are making on like new ideas, like think like sort of side tech, hipster nerd kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm finding it very hard to find a local social blogger in that area. I mean, does anyone else know of something if you guys? Don't? Yeah, well, I, I, I'm a moderator on, um, well, Adele and I have a blogging, or have a page called Perth and WA Bloggers, and there's 753 people on there, um, growing every day, and that ranges from people that, um, you know, are mummy bloggers, um, people that blog about sewing handbags, people that blog about food psychology, there is, and I'm even surprised about how many different realms, you know, people go, or how many different avenues people go into with their blogs. Um, so if you, if anyone's interested, by all means, like hit up the, hit up the page and have a look, um, because you can find some really, really interesting stuff. And tomorrow actually is Sharesies Friday. So people share their latest posts from the week. So you can actually go through and check out people's blogs. And, um, it's really interesting to see what people are writing about. So, but yeah. What's the page name again? Perth and WA bloggers. So, yeah. How do you review what does work and what doesn't work? You mentioned a certain post with not that many likes, but it's the comments that matter. So, is there a process that you go through to review? Um, I, I think I think it's a combination. Like, you can't really. For me, like, I have a pet hate um, when people are like, "Oh my God, it got you know 300 likes," but you know, if someone sent you that item and paid you to promote that item and it got 300 likes, that's all well and good. But did they actually get anything from that? Did people actually go to their website? Did people actually go and look at that product? Did people actually buy that? That's the most important thing for me to know if a post was successful. Um, because at the end of the day, that's what we're there to do. We're there to, you know, excite people about new things, new experiences, new products. Um, so, you know, just having people like the photo, that's that's all well and good, that's fantastic, that is a great indicator that it's successful. But I would say that you've got to take into account the likes, the comments, uh, the reach, so if people are sharing it, yeah, the clicks, on the um, yeah, all that sort of stuff. So you've really got to look at it in a, like, in an entire kind of um, package as opposed to just one variable, unless of course that's what you wanted it to do. So. Are there any specific tools that you use to see how many uh, how many people have clicked the page and gone to the landing page? Yeah, so you, um, Nicola uses Rush, is that what it's called? Um, oh, well, that's the SEM Rush one. Yeah. But also, just Google, your, Google Analytics. Analytics will tell you if it's coming from Facebook, where your source is, and that'll give you an idea. Yeah. Um, and also on the actual post itself, if you go to the insights and 
and if you've done a promoted post as well, and you can see how many people have interacted with it and what interactions they've done, whether that be a, a click on the link and stuff. So you can get all that stuff quickly on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it's 5.30, so if you want to... Just One more question? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, catch the name of the um, app for looking at who Oh, um, that's Icono Square. Square. Yeah, that's that's uh, web based. If you want to, you can use um, Crowdfire. It is Crowdfire. Is Instagram? Uh, so on your phone, that's an app. Um, I deleted all those ones ages ago because I got sad. Some... Yeah, it makes you really sad. I don't like knowing who's on phone. Really. <laughs> it's very sad. Yeah. If you know yeah. them, it's really sad. Yeah. It's like you just broke up. Um, are there any other questions, or is everyone? <laughs> what are you rush off? Let's go. Cool. Let's go. Thanks everyone for coming. Next week we have um, exporting and importing with Dr. Sandy Chong at 4 p.m. next Thursday. So, cool. Thanks everyone. <laughs>